Wrestling fans that play video games love their wrestling games, particularly those that are licensed by the big companies, such as the WWF slash WWE, the now defunct WCW, and most recently TNA. Wrestling games have been around for a while, and as time has passed, they've evolved from 2D sprites with limited move sets into 3D polygonal models with signature moves, entrances, backstage environments, story modes, and the ability to create a wrestler. The game I'm going to be talking about stems from Japan and never saw the light of day in North America until the most recent Fire Pro Returns got a US port in 2007. The Fire Pro series started in 1989 with the PC game Fire Pro Wrestling Combination Tag and went on to produce games for the Super Famicom, Sega Mega Drive, Saturn, Dreamcast, and Playstations 1 and 2. Fire Pro Returns, aka Fire Pro R, was translated and ported to the US in 2007, which was music to the ears of those that would modify their systems with a mod chip, or even go out of their way to buying a Japanese console since you couldn't play the Japanese discs on American systems. Plus, since the words are in English, you don't have to do all kinds of research to figure out what each menu is, even though the translations aren't perfect, as you might expect. Now, you may have noticed that the character sprites are in 2D. But this is PS2. Why haven't the game developers gotten with the times and made the games in 3D? Well, they've maintained their traditional layout going back to the early games of the series, and the extra room definitely comes in handy with the extensive move list, roster space, and customizable options. Even though the wrestlers are 2D sprites, they're not rollovers from the old Super Famicom games. The graphics and animation have been tweaked, and it all runs pretty smoothly. The game's niche isn't its graphics anyway. It's about the wrestling and the custom features. First thing I'll talk about is the gameplay. Unlike most wrestling games, you won't find yourself mashing buttons at all unless you're escaping a submission or a pin, in which case you'll rotate around the D-pad. Everything is about timing. You have your strike moves and grapple moves. The grapples occur automatically when the wrestlers get close to each other. Then it's up to you to press the grapple buttons at the right time to execute the move. To execute a grapple move, press any directional button along with one of the action buttons. The action buttons have a sequential order in terms of power. In other words, square is your weak move, X is your mediocre move, and circle is your strong move. Pressing these buttons by themselves will execute your strikes, and square and X simultaneously will execute your finisher. Now you have to strategize here. You can't go for your strong moves earlier, they won't work, because reversals are automatic, and if your opponent isn't worn down enough, he'll easily be able to escape your high impact moves. So you have to wear down your opponent with your weaker moves first and work your way up. It makes the match play out in a more realistic, linear sequence of events. Another thing you have to consider is conserving stamina. If you do a lot of running around, using the ropes, and doing high-risk moves, your stamina will drain, and once you start getting tired, you'll need a few seconds to catch your breath. The more stamina you drain, the longer you'll need to recuperate, and if you drag it out long enough, you'll hardly be able to get any offense in. The amount of stamina you have depends on which wrestler you select, so someone like Andre the Giant won't take too long to start huffing and puffing while Ultimo Dragon can do all kinds of flip-flops for a while before needing to catch his breath. So take into account who you're fighting with when executing your strategy. One thing I'll stress here is that there's a pretty steep learning curve with this game. When I first played it, I couldn't get any moves in. I got my ass handed to me and I was like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? But I had to keep plugging and figure out the timing. Definitely takes some time to get used to. There are plenty of match types, each with options you can tweak. There's the standard singles match, tag match, six man tag, four on four survivor series, handicap match with any combinations of up to four on each team, battle royals of up to eight people which can be either by pin or over the top rope, cage match, barbed wire death match with an optional exploding ring, landmine death match with C4 explosives, last man standing, S1 which is kickboxing rules, striking moves only, and gruesome fighting is a mixed martial arts battle in the octagon. So this isn't strictly a wrestling game, it's really an assorted sports fighting game with wrestling as its main centerpiece. In fact, every character in the game has a specific branch of moves strictly used for the octagon battles, so it's not like you'll be seeing Irish whips and power bombs in the octagon, and the MMA guys will be out of their element in the wrestling ring, and vice versa. Unfortunately, there's no career or story mode, but you can have a tournament, league play, and title match where you can put a created belt on the line. There's also matchmaker mode where you can construct your own card, but for no good fucking reason at all you can't use any created wrestlers, so I never bother with that. Speaking of created wrestlers, the creator wrestler feature is of course a pretty big topic of interest to people that might want to play this game. The Fire Pro series invented the creator wrestler feature way back before it became a big deal here in the States. 
Now, first thing I'll mention about the roster is that there are 327 wrestlers already in the game from different organizations in different countries, including some legends like Bret Hart, Terry Funk, Road Warriors, the British Bulldogs, and Andre the Giant. Due to the lack of an official license, the wrestlers don't go by their real names. In fact, a lot of the names that were given to them are pretty funny. Thankfully, you can edit their names to their real-life counterparts, or if that takes too long, you can always download a file of the edited roster to your memory card. A great place for edit packs and created wrestlers is fireproclub.com. Now, for the guys already in the game, the only thing you can edit are their names and one of their four costumes, but you can copy them into one of the created wrestler slots and edit anything you want. And there are 500 created wrestler slots, so there's plenty of room. There are hundreds of custom parts for your created wrestler and a very broad range for color customizing. And you can edit the color of each individual part, unlike how the SmackDown games give you one color option for the pants as an example. But in Fire Pro you can edit the pants and the color stripe separately for whatever other designs you might have. The creator wrestler feature isn't quite as eccentric as the SmackDown series, like you can't morph each individual body part to mold the shapes to your specific liking. But you can still make great customs of real wrestlers past and present. And all the in-game wrestlers are made up of parts that you can use to create a wrestler. So it's not like in the SmackDown games where even a well-designed creation can still be spotted from a mile away as a creation. Unless your creations just suck, in Fire Pro you can't distinguish whether or not each wrestler is created or not, which makes for a better blend of characters. And there's a lot more to creating than just appearance. Each wrestler is assigned several moves for any specific situation, and you have 1,649 to choose from. Yeah, I said 1,649 moves. If I said that there were a ton of moves to choose from, I'd only be 351 short of telling you the actual truth. There are so many goddamn moves to choose from, it's insane. Every variation of strike, suplex, and pile driver, and anything else you can possibly think of is probably in this game. So if you want to create a wrestler and give him a set of moves that's 100% accurate with its real life counterpart, then you can. In fact, if you want to make them even more authentic, you can adjust their logic settings, which will determine how they wrestle when the computer controls them. You'll be able to adjust how often they go for weapons, how often they do their finisher, go for a pin, and how they act during matches. Then there are other parameters that affect how well they perform each type of move, how well they defend them, and what their attributes are for each skill level, which have no limitations. You can crank them all up to the maximum possible. Which is good, because if you want to create someone like The Undertaker that's known to completely dominate and kick people's asses, then you should be able to give them numbers that reflect that. The wrestlers themselves aren't all you can customize. You can also build your own ring, design your own belts, make up your own leagues, and put whatever wrestlers you want in each of them. Create a logo that can be used as a centerpiece for a custom ring or for your own league. Hell, you can even create a referee and decide how fast he counts, how fast he moves, how much he intervenes double teaming, etc, etc. The world of Fire Pro Wrestling is yours to manipulate and control. If you want to recreate matches from years gone by, set up dream bouts from past versus present, mix up the mixed martial arts world with the wrestling world, it's all up to you. There's so much freedom, you can do some real interesting shit if you think outside the box. Like for example, you can create boxers and make sure that all their striking moves are punches, so when you put them in a kickboxing match, it'll essentially be a boxing match. Fire Pro Wrestling Returns is the most solid and deep wrestling game to date. There's such a wide variety of options, and the wrestling itself is the most accurate simulation of an actual match that you can possibly find in a video game. Minus the predetermined outcomes, of course. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.